Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. So I just spent about 45 minutes wasting my time. I thought I was going to live stream. I thought I had this idea. My friend Ed said I could live stream my readings uh, so that I wouldn't have to upload it because it automatically uploads it. But um, I think I need some help with the technology. So I am back here and I'm going to be reading this article again. Testing the validity of the International Atomic Energy Agency safety culture model. We are back into it. I apologize for being gone for a few days. Um, you know, as you knew, I was sick and I have school and tax season. And that just meant there was no time for anything else. All I could do was work and sleep and go to school and sleep. And So now I'm better. So I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to read a little bit. We're going to get through this because this is super fascinating. I know it's really bone dry, but, um, you know, they count on us not reading this stuff. So let us persist. So we are on 2.14, 2.1.4 survey administration. The survey was administered by the authors of the current study. This condition assured that any doubts when filling out the survey could be resolved by the researchers who were always present during the administration. No help was provided in terms of clarifying the meaning of the attributes and the dimensions, but only about the manner in which the survey should be completed. Each of the participants was provided with written instructions that explained the purpose of the study and the way the survey should be completed. Participants received the 37 attributes and the five dimensions on two different documents, and their task was to place each of the attributes in the dimension to which they believed it belonged. For this purpose, they were asked to write A, B, C, D, or E, letters representing the five dimensions, next to each of the attributes. Participants were encouraged not to leave any attribute without a response. Participation in making an effort to do their best were reinforced by telling the participants that they were contributing to the development of nuclear safety, an indispensable goal for all of us. Voluntary participation in anonymity was emphasized. No names or identifying information were required on the survey. Only some sociodemographic data, which included gender, age, and whether or not the participant had previous work experience. Reactions of a few students included a, about hard to answer statements. 5.1. Excuse me, 2.1.5. Reading it backwards. Analysis and results. For simplicity, a correct answer is scored when a participant successfully classifies an attribute in the dimension it belongs according to the IAEA. Huh. Incorrect answers reflect an inappropriate classification of attributes into dimensions. To get a global view of the face validity of the model, the average of correct answers per participant was correct calculated. Descriptive analysis indicated that the students were able to correctly allocate an average of 13 attributes, ranging from 3 to 22, out of 37 of their corresponding dimensions. Oh my gosh! 13! In the participants' opinions, 35.51% of the attributes appeared to measure the dimensions that, according to the IAEA, they were supposed to measure. Wow, so only 35%. The next step was to explore the face validity of each of the dimensions of the model. To do so, we analyzed participants' correct answers for each of the dimensions of the model. The the percentage of correct answers was given by this given by the students was 36.4% in dimension A, 44.7% in dimension B, and 28.6% in C, 25.8 in D, and 38.6 in E. 
And this is the test. They have each one of those lines. And it says, testing the face validity, the model of safety culture of the IAEA. Percentage of students allocating each of the attributes in each of the dimensions of the model. Wow. So these, I guess, are all of the students and the amount that they actually correctly allocated the attributes. I am sorry, man, and I am exhausted. So I'm going to keep going, though. Finally, <clears throat> face validity was checked in each of the 37 part attributes of the model. To do this, the percentage of participants assigning each of the attributes to each of the five dimensions of the model was calculated. A great variance was found in the result, ranging from 8% of the participants placing attribute B7 in its corresponding dimension, which is leadership for safety is clear, to 78% of the participants placing attribute B3 in its corresponding dimension, which is leadership for safety is clear. Further details of the allocation of the attributes can be seen in detail, detail in Table 3. I think those statements are the same as corresponding dimension. A great variance was found from 8% of the participants placing attribute B in its corresponding dimension and 78% of the participants placing attribute B3 in its corresponding dimension. We follow two different criteria to assess the face validity of the attributes of the model. The first and less restrictive criterion considered an attribute to have enough face validity when the percentage of students allocating it to its corresponding dimension was higher than the percentage of students allocating it to each of the four remaining dimensions. The second and more restrictive criterion accepted every attribute that was allocated to its corresponding dimension by at least half of the students. Under less restrictive conditions, 21 of the attributes were accepted, 4 attributes supposed to belong to dimension A, 7 to dimension B, 2 to, to dimension C, 3 to dimension D, and 5 to dimension E. The less restrictive criterion indicated that 43% of the attributes of the model did not show enough face validity. When the answers of the students were analyzed and according to the more restrictive criterion, only six attributes could be accepted as being face valid. That's A, 2, A, B, 3, and I really don't get what these numbers mean. In other words, according to more than half of the students, 84% of the attributes of the model did not appear to reflect what they intended to measure. Conclusion Taking the validity of the model at face value, it seems that most of the model's attributes and dimensions may be problematic. Moreover, of its components, attributes and dimensions do not appear to be valid to the untrained eye. Wow. So I, that, I guess that's what they're saying is that unless you're trained to twist and squirm and accept these things as valid, then it doesn't work. Oh, my God, you guys. Okay, I'm going to keep going. We're at 10 minutes. Second study. <clears throat> Testing validity content. Purpose of the study. The dimension of the content validity is a fundamental requirement of all assessment instruments because, among other reasons, by maximizing content validity, the predictive validity of the instrument will be enhanced. As Hayes et al. point out, most definitions of content validity refer to the degree in which elements of an assessment instrument are relevant to and representative of the target construct for a particular assessment purpose. While the, relevant, while the relevance aspect refers to the appropriateness of its items, that is, the degree to which the instrument contains items reflecting the facets and dimensions of the targeted construct, the representativeness re refers to the coverage of the intended construct 
That is, the extent to which the content of the items is sampled representatively from the universe of content being measured. These two characteristics of content validity have been highlighted by Fitzpatrick in 1983 as domain relevance and domain sampling by Anastasi in 1986 as content relevant and content coverage. The purpose of this second study is to shed light on the content validity of the IAE, IAEA safety culture model. Yeah. We tested the relevance of the 37 attributes of the model to the five dimensions of safety culture identified by the IAEA. I'm going to end here and hold on. I want to see if I can like uh, browse around in this article. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see better. And I'm going to see if we can get a little bit more of what it says these 37 attributes are. I keep reading this and I don't really hear it. So maybe I need to go back and review what the 37 attributes are. Hmm. The living love of dimension costs da 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 da. Well, okay, hold up. Conceptualization of safety culture. We read this the other day. Safety culture has been closely related to the de development of the term safety climate. Safety climate includes the day-to-day -day perceptions towards the working environment, which is why the, at the EPA they can say they have a good safety climate. Safety culture comprises a variety of contents that are in dis indistinctly called indicators, principles, traits, characteristics, components, dimensions, attributes, or other combinations of these. Oh, that's right. So they use different words in different organizations. So the health and safety has identified the five dimensions as safety, leadership, two-way communication, employee involvement, learning culture, and attitudes towards blame, a just culture. Okay, so here, let's go back to this table one, this thing that I didn't read the other day. This will clarify. Some of the common themes and dimensions of safety culture identified by safety culture reviews, regulators, and organizations. Uh, Sorensen identified this in 2002. Safety culture, good organizational communication, good organizational learning, senior management commitment to safety, work, working environments that rewards identifying safety issues, participative management leadership style. Wegman et al. in 2004 said this is what it is. Organizational commitment, management involvement, employee empowerment, reward systems, and reporting systems. So far, I haven't seen anything that they do right now at all. Inpo and Wano in 2006. This is their idea of a safety culture. Everyone is personally responsible for nuclear safety. Leaders demonstrate commitment to safety. Trust permeates the organization. Decision-making reflects safety first. Nuclear technology is recognized as special and unique. A questioning attitude is cultivated. Organizational learning is embraced. Nuclear safety undergoes constant examination. The HSC in 2005 said this is what safety culture is. Leadership, two-way communication, employee involvement, learning culture, and just culture, or a just, like as in justice. The IAEA in 2006 says this is what safety culture is. Safety is a clearly recognized value. That's amb ambiguous. Leadership for safety is clear. Accountability for safety is clear. Safety is integrated into all activities. Safety is learning driven. Yeah, well, they don't even abide by their own safety practices, stupid fucks. They're fucking killing the planet. 
Chaudhry in 2007 said this is what safety culture is. Management commitment to safety, management concerns for the workforce, mutual trust and credibility between management and employees, workforce empowerment, continuous monitoring, corrective action, review of the system, continual improvements to reflect the safety at the work site. Now this is what our old NRC says safety is, 2011, the liars and murderers that they are. And I'm talking to you, Gina McCarthy. You think you're fucking going to go to heaven? Hell no. In fact, I actually hope there's a hell that you get to burn in. You're going to have a special kind of hell. Okay. The NRC says this. Leadership safety values. Leadership safety values and actions. Problem identification and resolution. Personal accountability. Ha! Work processes. Continuous learning. Environment for raising concerns. Effective communication. Safety communication. Respectful work environment. And a questioning attitude. Wow. So this is why they have failed. That's why these students are saying this is all failed. Because they honestly don't care. So these are the attributes, and I think that I read these before, so I think I'm going to read those again tomorrow night. These are called the five dimensional safety culture models, the dimensions, and the attributes. And those are the A, B, C, D, E that the students were testing and seeing if they could put them into the right place. So I know that this is really a dry reading. It's kind of difficult to listen to this. It's not as thrilling as listening to John Goffman. But it's very important for us to understand that they just write shit down and they don't do jack about it. They just say they're doing something. And in the meantime, cancer is the number one killer of our kids. People in St. Louis are being murdered and maimed every single day. People up in Hanford are being murdered and maimed every single day. We are being bombarded like you would not believe from radiation from Fukushima, which is now out of control. And we are considered, uh, oh, uh, what do we call uh I wouldn't say we're called conspiracy. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do they call it? Nuke mongers. <laughs> we're con called nuke mongers because we are willing to admit that nuclear pollution and nu is murderous. And the nuclear industry is a failed experiment. The only reason we're keeping it alive is so that the military can have more weapons and bombs. I'm not buying into that, folks. So anyways, put your courage feet on. I am going to do another reading tomorrow night. I'm going to keep on this. I apologize for being gone for a few days. I kind of got my energy back. I think I'm mostly over it. My lungs are still a little congested, but I'm 99% better. So um, share this channel. Subscribe below. Put your comments. And anybody that makes a negative comment about... Anybody else is going to be deleted. Anybody that says they're a pro-nuker is going to be deleted. I don't even tolerate the bullshit of, oh, we have solutions using nuclear pollution. That's just a fucking lie. As this whole paper is showing us, the IAEA is nothing but a bunch of bastard liars who deserve to be in fucking jail for the rest of their goddamn lives. Not rich pricks who get to live off the murder of every person that they've harmed. And yeah, I'm angry. So put your courage feet on, you guys. Take some action. Figure out a way to get off your ass and take some action. And I mean every fucking week. Doesn't have to be every day, but fucking do something. Call up these fucking bastard elected officials who refuse to even be human beings. Poke them in the fucking eye, man. Like, call them. Don't let them sleep at night. They are murdering our planet. There is a sense of urgency here. Do more than put your courage feet on. Take action, folks. So, ciao. Talk to you later.